Peace, peace. This is your host, Selah Shalom, and this is the Cosmon teachings and the words of Jehovah and his angel ambassadors from the Cosmon Bible of Waspi. And the topic of discussion today is called True God is Answered by the Etherians in the Higher Heavens. Etheria. Now, God's book of Esra, chapter 60, verse 1 through 43, it states, verse 1, the Lord said, in the same hour when God in paradise received the epistle from the four false gods, a light appeared in the famine above, descending from the Etherian heavens. Verse 2, it was a starship from the Naravenian heavens of Kahachad, only 400 years from the dawn of the Ark of Cosmon, of the era of Cosmon. Now the year 1848 AD present time was the beginning of the Ark of Cosmon. So 400 years previous would be 1448 AD. That is when these events were taking place. Verse 3. Like a crescent made of stars with the sun between the horns, it came, a very world of light, swiftly coming toward paradise. Verse 4. Down came the ship of fire, far below the moon's orbit, and then halted. For two whole days it halted, as if to warn the false gods, the pretended saviors of angels and mortals, that Jehovah had spoken in the higher heavens. Verse 5. Then came again the starship, till it entered near the throne of God. Verse 6. And the lights of the Etherian waves of higher worlds were opened, and there came out of the midst of the arches of ships a million angels, well trained in the management of worlds, and they were headed by Hyaponitissa, goddess of Viagonataj, in the plains of Myogath. Verse 7, And God of Paradise raised the lights of his heavens, and opened his palace and throne to the approaching goddesses and her hosts. God's holy council made way, and Hyaponitissa and her hosts entered the palace of God. Verse 8, God said, Hail, daughter of Jehovah, in his name, welcome to my throne. Verse 9, And God saluted on the sign, the circuit and the triangle. High upon Atissa answered in the sign, chain of the circuit, saying, All honor and praise to thee, O God, Jehovah's Son. Verse 10, Then she went up and sat on the throne of God, and her host filed in front in a crescent, maintaining the chain of Etherian light to the ships, and thence to the worlds above. Verse 11, The S in Nours, chanted an anthem to Jehovah, and after that the goddess rose up on the throne of God and said, verse 12, Praise be unto thee, Jehovah, my eyes have beholden a son of thy love, the glory of the red star in her heavens, though has uncovered before me, verse 13, the toils and trials of thy God, though has opened as a book is open, and the dark ages of hundreds of years, though has made transparent by the light of thy countenance. Verse 14, Thou hast appropriated those that labor for their own glory to sweep from off the earth and her heavens oracle worships and adultery. And these curses shall return not again forever. Verse 15, The prayer of thy God reached up to the heavens. Chahakad, the gods of other worlds, hearken unto his voice. Verse 16, And thy voice, Jehovah, came unto me, saying, Daughter of the Agatage, haste thou quickly to the red star, my God is calling. Verse 17. And thou gavest into my hands a million of thy holy sons and daughters, with the great ship of fire. Verse 18. And I sped through the Etherian seas and wide roadways, glorying in the works thou givest me. Verse 19. Now, behold, I am honored before thee and before thy God and his holy council. Verse 21. My love is to them like a sister who had found a long lost brother, the glory of thy handwork, though has manifested in them. Verse 21. Thereupon the goddess gave the sign, love to all, and she sat down. Then God rose up and said, Verse 22. Because thou hast blessed my people, O Jehovah, I am abashed before thy goddess, who hath come so far to see me. Verse 23. Behold, in the last hour of my trials, Thou hast said unto me in the time I was heartbroken. Thou hast thrust into my kingdom the chain of thy Etherian light. Verse 24. How can I be unmindful of thee, Jehovah? How can I doubt the triumphant of the Almighty? 
thou hast dwellers in thy Orion realms whose presence are as a power to overturn a world. Verse 25. And thou hast found one that rushes forth at thy command to show me the way of score. Verse 26. Thereupon God gave the sign, a grateful heart, and he also sat down. Verse 27. Again, the S and Nours chanted, and presently a ray of light passed over the head of Hyaponetissa, the goddess, and it formed above the throne like a brilliant star. Verse 28. And the voice came out of the star, saying, My son, God of the red star in our heavens, all honor and glory be unto thee. Verse 29. The measure of thy labor is known to my sons and daughters in the higher heavens. Verse 30. From this time forth, concern not thyself more about the four false gods. Sufficient unto them is the work they have undertaken. Verse 31. Behold, they have appropriated four great divisions of the earth unto themselves, and the heavens thereof have become their dominions. Suffer them therefore to keep what they have taken. Verse 32. Because they have bound mortals by their religions, and established themselves by mortal laws, and by force of their standing armies, thou shalt give unto them even all they have bound on earth and in heaven. Now here's where Jehovah refers to the coming of America. Verse 33. But behold, I have another continent laying beyond the ocean, Guatama, which is America, where my people know me and worship me, referring to the Native Americans. The Native Americans has been a people known to worship the Creator, the Great Spirit only, unlike the Eastern countries where you find a multitude of gods. Verse 34. Heather shall thou inspire mortals to go from the East and find Guatama, America and inhabit it. Verse 35. And Heather, it shall come to pass, none of the false gods shall establish their doctrine by mortal laws and bind my people. And this land of America was not established through religion. Verse 36. And as for the spirits of such mortals as the false gods caused to be slain in the inquisitions, leave them to those gods that took them. Verse 37. And thou such spirits have vengeance in their hearts, and will be the means of ultimately casting the false gods into hell, yet thou shalt not go near them. As I stated before, it will be the angel followers of these false gods who will bring their own heavenly and earthly kingdoms down. Verse 38, But thou shalt look to the mortals whom thou shalt take over to inhabit the western continent. Verse 39, And thou shalt send Luiz, and raise up by birth certain mortals who shall ignore the doctrine of enforced worship for any god or lord or savior. Verse 40. For the people of that land shall be free, not only in body but in spirit also. Verse 41. And it shall be guaranteed unto them to worship in my way, that their conscience may dictate. Verse 42. And when the dawn of the ark of Cosmon cometh, behold, I will open up my heavens unto mortals and prepare the foundation of my kingdom on earth. So here Jehovah states that he's going to establish his kingdom on earth in the Cosmon era, which the Cosmon era began in 1848 AD present time. So we're 160 plus years within the Ark of Cosmon. Verse 43, the voice ceased and now God declared a day of recreation that the Etherians and Atmospherians may mingle together and rejoice before Jehovah. And this was done also. And on the next day, Hyaponetissa departed, leaving the request Etherians laborers with God. And this ends the book of Eskra. And with that, I'd like to say peace and blessings and catch you on the next documentary called The Four False Gods Are Cast in Hell and Delivered by True God, Son of Jehovah. Shalom. Shalom.